So my name is Saad Farooq Mazam and I'm a mechanical engineering senior studying at Texas A&M University in Qatar. And uh, I attended EIA, the European Innovation Academy in Italy this summer in 2017. And I was uh, lucky enough and successful enough to come out with a real startup out of the program. So uh, I was highly motivated to get into the startup world before I went to EIA because when you're studying engineering most people don't have the, mind, the business mindset and uh, sometimes it becomes too claustrophobic. You don't have enough opportunity for free thinking. So when I went there I had the opportunity to meet lots of different minded people and over there we were able to make a very diverse team. All five of us were from five different countries and uh, we went into the program with an initial idea but then we ended up pivoting three or four days into the program and now we have a startup which aspires to create uh, an augmented reality solution for people who have vestibular disorders for to provide them with rehabilitation at home. I'm Federico Mamano, I'm uh, a serial entrepreneur. Uh, I've started uh, my first company when I was still a student about 15 years ago in the virtual reality industry as a pioneer and as a garage entrepreneur at that time, so without any kind of ecosystem support. Um, so I would have loved to have this kind of experience uh, in EIA, AIA, loved a lot of time uh, ago. Um, great experience. I have been chief innovation mentor there uh, last summer and I had the pleasure to uh, help them and drive into this story and this three weeks. Uh, as a student studying here and as someone who's lived here in the Middle East for the last 13 years, I believe that this kind of program is very important because usually people over here and students over here don't have enough exposure as compared to students in Europe and the US and I think this is the perfect opportunity for them to go to the next level so they can compete internationally. Yeah. Something also important to say is that their team at EIA uh, was not only made of uh, Qatari people or US people, yeah. there were... There were Europeans, there was yeah. an Australian girl, it was very diverse. Yeah. So at EIA, uh, first of all Federico was our chief mentor and uh, we went into the program with a month's planning beforehand for a different idea. The CEO of the team at the time firstly wanted to create an augmented reality content creation platform so that we could create augmented reality media content for different clients. But when we got to EIA and we heard the first three or four keynote speeches, I personally realized that uh, the current our current startup idea is not addressing a problem so me and a few other team members were struggling to find the real need for our idea and that hesitation was what caused us to first of all have a lot of conflict within the team because some members wanted to stay with the previous idea and two or three of us wanted to pivot into something else but eventually with the help of the mentors and Federico and the life coaches we were able to all come together and decide that we should change our idea. We then had the luck of running into Dr. Jonathan Spindel who is, a, who is the director of engineering programs at Jefferson University in the US and a vestibular specialist. So when he ran into me and I started discussing our problem with him that we want to focus on something that uses augmented reality but we can't find the problem, he told us that he has uh, had experience with treating people who have vestibular disorders which are inner ear imbalance issues for the past 30 years. So uh, he then told us that he has tried to use virtual reality in the past but that was not a viable option because virtual reality itself makes people dizzy and that's one of the main symptoms of the disease we're trying to address. That's what gave us the spark of then pursuing the use of augmented reality because augmented reality doesn't have the same side effects as virtual reality. 
and that's when we started gaining a lot of traction with the mentors and even with our market research so once we were a week into the three-week pr program we knew exactly what we had to do even though we struggled a lot in the beginning and uh, obviously uh, one of the biggest pro one of the biggest issues everyone at EIA faced or the biggest issue was teams so uh, people who come to EIA and they make a team of five people don't personally know know these people beforehand so everything is very new and once you start to get people then you realize that maybe this was the best team or this wasn't but in our case myself and one uh, one other team member Delano from the University of Texas at San Antonio we were able to bond very well and we had the same vision we had the same drive and motivation so we continued through the program to the best of our ability and then after that we continued and for the past four months we've been working on it with advice from Federico and recently about three weeks ago um, we had applied for a grant from the University of Texas at San Antonio and uh, we were we came second in the competition and we've been given thirty thousand dollars in funding and services to use for our startup. Oh, this is a quite common story. I mean, not only um, for the um, Vertigo team now, this is quite common that when you start a program and you start to keep really attached to your baby, to your idea, to start to create this kind of team around the idea, but the idea is just a solution that you're trying to push and I would say vomit on the market. And what happened is as soon as the idea crashed, most of the time the team crash with the idea and so that's the the worst moment is this roller coasters you start with high motivation you crash and after you have to do a lot of work to try to yep. recreate gather the team members yep. um, and so that's a big lesson because EIA also allows the teams to you know play with startups at some point and create this kind of skills that in the real world you can't so it gives you the opportunity to have a safety net to try your uh, to to crash at some point uh, both from the personal perspective and also to on the pre on the process and so now um, you are playing for real yeah. right so you have to be very strong mentally and emotionally and you have to in some way detach yourself emotionally from your idea because uh, if you think critically and you think about the problem and the solution and rationally consider the pros and cons of what you're doing, only then can you move on when you've done something wrong. Otherwise, you'll be stuck in an endless loop of trying to do the same thing again and again. Yeah. Something that also makes a lot of sense, is very relevant with this program, is something that I always, start, I always say is not for tooting my own horns, but it's a quote that I used to say is the best innovator is a childlike scientist, childlike like a kindergartner that is so curious, has a lot of curiosity for the outside world and it allows you also to create and prototype and have a vision of this of this process as a, and play also as a scientist that has this determination to go on and use this kind of experiment mindset and validation that allows you to day by day make this progress. And this is exactly why I consider programs such as EIA and AIA very good because students studying engineering have this kind of mindset, they want to solve problems but they don't necessarily know the approach, the business approach or the marketing approach. And these programs bring both of those mindsets together. So uh, our initial goal is to address the US market. So we'll be starting off with Texas because I myself am studying in Texas A&M University and our other three team members are also studying in the University of Texas. So that makes most sense right now because Texas as a state is quite big our problem though is global, so our eventual goal is to go from Texas to the continental US then to Europe and then all over the world because it's a very very common disease that affects many people all over the world. Um, I'm Chief Innovation Mentor also here in Qatar and following other teams. Uh, I'm also speaker here giving some keynotes and trying to help this young generation and being innovators and not inventors yeah, so as an advisor. Is our yeah. chief advisor uh, for the startup and we 
uh, we kept in touch with him once we finished EIA and then we've been talking to him ever since for advice and now he's officially our advisor for the startup. Yeah, so I'm helping them basically with the strategy, the product and the marketing, how to unpack exactly and have a clear view about the decision and, and, and problem from the market. So short term future plans are to first of all uh, redo some of our market research because uh, as we discussed with Federico over the past few days we might have led uh, some of our consumers into thinking a certain way and got answers from them got the answers that we wanted to hear so the first immediate goal is to redo some market research uh, and then to allocate the funding that we have for purposes such as development, applying for a patent in the US, and uh, developing for other uh, marketing solutions. And it's also in the plan to have an incorporation in US. For students doing EI programs like EIA and AIA, I really suggest that they should make the most of however long the program is, 10 days, 20 days, because in my experience, uh, I went to EIA not just for the experience but to actually get something out of it and I have to say that it did allow me, it did give me a step from which I was able to go further. And from my perspective it allows to change the mindset that most of the students, I would say 100% of the students get in and step in this program with the common mindset of selling products and not focusing on the problems that market have so as soon as they finish the program the talk and the language is much easier because they have get this kind of mindset and attention to the problem and they can really understand when you talk and they have you know touch with their hands and th they can really understand w what you suggest them and and so it's it's the best way to to succeed